date is 2-23-23. Thank you for watching the Calvary Briefing. In 1979, a book was released by an author by the name of Becky Pippert. The name of the book was Out of the Salt Shaker. And the basic thesis of the book was that as Christians... When we gather together, we are like salt in a salt shaker. And you might remember that Jesus actually said to his disciples, you are the salt of the world. And as Christians are gathered together in a salt shaker, um, they also need to be out of the salt shaker. You know that if you just take a salt shaker and take that straight salt onto your tongue... It does not taste very good, but as it is seasoning a piece of meat used sparingly, it gives that meat a flavor. And so the thesis of this book by Becky Pippert was, get out of the salt shaker. In other words, take your faith into the world and share it with others. Well, that's been many, many years since that book was released, and she recently did an interview, and she shared this information in her interview that today, people in America are still open to talking about Jesus Christ if they are not a person who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ. We have the idea that today culture is antagonistic toward Christianity, and there's a way in which that is true, but the actual ways in which people are open to talk about Jesus I really haven't changed all that much if we treat people with respect. And Pippert said this, here's the puzzle. Why do so many Christians sincerely believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most wonderful, liberating news God has ever given our weary planet, yet struggle to talk with others about it? And isn't that the issue of our time? Why, if we think this good news is good, and in fact, if we think it's the best news ever, why do we struggle to share the good news? Well, Becky Pippert has been doing seminars and teaching around the world for 40 years or so. And at her seminars, she often will stand in front of the group with her husband, and they will ask the question, why don't you share the good news of the gospel more than you do? And she writes that there are five main answers. And they are as follows. What if I offend or am, I reject, or I'm, am rejected? What if they ask a question I can't answer? I can't witness because I'm not an extrovert or a gifted evangelist. I feel paralyzed by my weakness and inadequacy. I'm not good at debate or apologetics. I'd witness more if I had answers to the questions that people will ask. Becky Pippert said she and her husband put these objections up on a screen of some sort, and then they ask the people that are at the seminar to look at those objections and find a common theme in those objections. And usually the audiences and the classes that she is teaching find that common thread. Their focus is entirely on themselves. As you think about that, those objections are things that many of us feel. And yet we have to admit the focus is on us. And as Pippert goes on with her seminar, she often asks, what's missing in this? What's missing in these objections? And as people look at them, they again say, well, we don't even mention God in our objections to sharing our faith. Well, as we look at God's Word, we see that the disciples struggled in many of the same ways that we do. The disciples had seen Jesus feed people. The disciples had seen Jesus perform miracle after miracle. And yet the disciples were hesitant to step out in faith. As we look at our own lives and as we look at the disciples' lives, 
there are some solutions to the problem of not sharing our faith more than we do. And one of those solutions starts with repentance. As we've been going through the Gospel of John here at Calvary Church on Sunday mornings, we're aware of repentance, the necessity of turning and going in another direction. As we are normally traveling towards sin and involved in sinful behavior, repentance means that we turn from that. Well, we need to constantly repent. And we need to ask God to forgive us for relying on our own strength. Like the man in Mark 9, 24, we, we need to cry out to God, I believe, but help my unbelief. And as we look at Paul, we see that Paul asked God to take away a, a thorn that was in his flesh that was preventing him from being all that he thought he could be for Christ. And yet we remember the words of God to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Christ answered Paul's request, not by curing him, but with a promise. And that promise set Paul free. And Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest on me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And then in Philippians chapter 4, Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Most of our objections as to why we don't share our faith more are our objections. And yet God is made perfect in our weaknesses. Here's the great truth. The world greatly needs Jesus. And so do we. Our human weakness doesn't matter at all to God. It doesn't hinder Him. He's delighted to use us just as we are, weaknesses and all. We have questions that we can't answer. We have fears and failures. God is able to overcome those and work through us. The last paragraph of an article written by Becky Pippert says this, The issue is our focus. A God focus stirs our courageous action, whereas a self-focus stymies it. Remember, Jesus promises we're not alone. I'm with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. It's Christ's presence in our lives that strengthens our witness. Can God use us to communicate the gospel effectively? Emphatically, I say, yes, because even though our context and our culture has changed, the power of the gospel has not changed a bit. We can speak the gospel with confidence, knowing Christ is the answer to people's greatest needs and desires, including their profound longing for home. As you watch today and as you are living on the 23rd day of February in 2023, would you think about taking an adventure outside of the salt shaker? Thank you.